Oh, the trout. Oh my gosh. Hey, this is Luke Simons with Salt Strong. Have a fun video to share with you. This is for those who like really paddle fishing, whether you're in a kayak or paddleboard and exploring some, some backwater creeks. And, and winter time, you know, right now is the, the, really the best time to do it, especially here in Florida. The weather's not, uh, it's not too cold. Uh, the, the mosquitoes aren't as bad. And also the, the fish are often pushed up into those creeks. So it's a great time to get out there where there's actually more fish than, than throughout the rest of the year and there's less mosquitoes, great combination. So this trip in particular, I got more than I bargained for. I, I really didn't do much pre-trip planning. Uh, this was a last second. Uh, I had to go down to, to St. Pete and at the last second I decided, okay, the, I know there's a little creek there that, I, that I've, I've eyed, you know, I've been, uh, I'd noticed a while back. And I knew there was a launch point, and, uh, but I didn't really spend much time checking it out before I left. So it wasn't like fresh in my mind on, on, on what the best route was. And I didn't really take into account how long it was gonna be. And just everything went wrong. My cell phone died, so I, I couldn't access the map. I got totally lost. And so at the end, I'll show you the footage. And at the end, I'll, I'll show you some tips on what you can do just to make sure that you can get back safely, even when things, when everything goes wrong, like, like what happened on this trip. So what I'll do is I'll walk you through the footage. It ended up being a great trip, although there, everything went wrong there toward the end. I'll walk you through the footage, and at the end, I'll share with you some tips on just how to do this as safely as possible. I, I made a lot of mistakes on this trip because I just really was taking a lot of shortcuts just due to time. And so I'll talk about you know, the pre-trip planning things you need to do, the equipment, and then really the mindset in case everything goes wrong, what to do, and, and this was a perfect example. So for those who like kayak and paddleboard fishing, especially in the backwater creeks, you're gonna like this video. All right, I was over in uh, St. Pete checking out a house and uh, the place was near a little canal and I saw there was a little kayak launch so I brought the uh, of course had to bring the paddleboard and I'm gonna launch in there and let's uh, let's see if there's any fish to be caught hopefully I can push through all this stuff so the very beginning of this paddle was uh, was really tight quarters as you can see here I was having to to really dodge these sticks and uh, and it was shallow on one side and, and those on the left hand side those trees were really growing over and, uh, and as I got further it kind of got a little bit wider you know I had a, some sections like this where you know basically the canopies were uh, were over which was really cool and uh, and throughout this whole time I was really just you know looking for fish and uh, and at this point you know you can see that it starts winding you know it gives that the harp the sharp turns, uh, which is pretty common in these creek systems. A lot of times there's fish. Uh, this one was was kind of void of life, which was a, a bit surprising. And uh, so I decided to just keep on keep on pushing forward. Yeah, at this point, it, it really started getting shallow. I, I bumped ground here in a second and I almost fell over there. And so I really had to, to get up right against those mangroves to push through. All right, now I'll get into another open area. Really shallow water. Looks like part of it goes that way, part of it goes that way. Hmm. Almost seems like more water is shooting out that way, so I'm gonna give that a whirl. I didn't expect this much off roading. Grab the paddle board and walk through it. It's all a nice sand bottom at least. So I can barefoot it without worrying about oysters. All right, so now getting deep enough to. Looks like there's a little canal here, so let's see if we can shoot on in without getting stuck. All right, so at this point, I was starting to get a little bit worried. You know, I was, uh, it was taking much longer than I thought. According to the map, it was only like an inch than I'd be in these canals that I wanted to fish. And I uh, didn't bother with, uh, in, in a haste, I didn't bother with uh, checking to see how much that inch was, whether it was a quarter mile, half mile, a couple miles. And, uh, and so now I'm coming up to another decision point. And uh, at this point, I was just totally guessing at it.
pretty cool. Pretty cool little bay. Yeah, so I came across another tunnel. Uh, again, this was like way past the time frame that I had allotted myself, but I was I was vested and I was there. I wasn't about to turn back without at least uh, getting to the canal system and, uh, and at least finally started seeing some action. I got some mullet. Finally seeing some fish. All mole, I don't see any snook yet. Gotta be some snook in there. Ooh, there's one. Bunch of little bait fish, that's looking good here. All right, so finally started looking good and, uh, and that sound in the background, that's not Jaws music, that is actually some construction that was happening on a house that, uh, that we're about to see. Uh, it's right now, I finally made it the canal system, that house dead ahead is, uh, is where their, the construction was going on. I just spooked a redfish right there in that creek, so I decided to, to make a cast or two to see if I can uh, get one to hit. So no luck at that first spot, and I decided just to, to start paddling, looking for some life, and I, I started seeing some little, just little bait fish along this, uh, this mangrove line, and it was fairly deep as well, and so I decided, okay, let's just, uh, let's just make some casts. So I started uh, getting some casts up under those mangroves, uh, fishing both, you know, way back underneath, as you'll see, I'm just doing a little skip cast, uh, way back up and into the under the roots, you know, under the shade, and then just working it out. And and typically, you know, right there, that shade line is uh, is typically going to hold a decent amount of fish. Plus, you know, the further back in there you can get, the better. And uh, but but this case, the, the 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 action I started getting here pretty soon was actually about maybe five to ten feet off of the mangrove. So it is always smart to uh you know to try both really really close as well as you know work your work the lures back to you Ooh. might have been a ladyfish oh. oh yeah that was definitely a ladyfish <laughs> oh, the trout. Oh my gosh. That's pretty funny. Kane pulled the trout. All right, the creek adventure paid off. A little trout, let's let him go. So I kept fishing that shoreline just to see if there's any other action to be had. Swiping at it. Ooh. Yeah, holy. Oh, big, oh my gosh, that was a big, that was a big ladyfish there. It was a giant ladyfish. I think we have a mix of ladyfish and trout. Let's see if I can't pick out a bigger trout. Ooh, there we are. Ah, that's a ladyfish there, I believe. Yeah, big old ladyfish. Quick release. I just realized I wasn't playing on fishing very long. I totally forgot pliers, so this line is a little bit frayed. I have no way to retie. Oh man. Either a ladyfish or a trout. Oh, ladyfish. Quick release. Yeah, I didn't bring any extra lures or hooks or anything. So I better take care of this line. It's not looking too good. So that area seemed to have a bunch of ladyfish, so I decided to keep moving down to see if I could find some snooker reds. Ooh, there's a redfish. All right, well, I think this little this little entrance right here is the uh, the other way in. So put the rod down and we'll give it a shot. Hopefully it works. All right, so that last clip, that's really where everything went bad. Uh, my, at that point, my, uh, my GoPro uh, had gone out, my chip, something had a chip error message. 
And although I had a bunch of batteries, I, I, I lost, I couldn't film anything. And, uh, and also, you know, that was when I, I really got lost. So I ended up going up that channel. That was the second route to get, to, to get back home. And, and it, the first route was a long ways back. And so I was trying to do a big loop. And I, went in, so I started going up that creek. It got too shallow again. So I, I walked the board, I mean, at least I would say a quarter mile. And then got to a point where I was just totally lost. I, I had no idea uh, where everything was. The current was slack, so I couldn't read just the water movement. And, uh, and I just had to go by the sun. And so I just basically ended up walking. I just found my way back. And then I had to paddle all the way around to go back the way I eventually came. And even when I got there, I still had those different, uh, those different turns that I did that I had to just guess on the way in. And so I'd had to just make some more guesses, made a couple wrong ones, and then I finally found a couple turns that I recognized. And from then on, I got back, and fortunately I got back before dark. But, uh, but anyway, it was, uh, was a nerve wracking time. I made a lot of mistakes, and number one is I really didn't tell anybody where I was gonna be, which is a huge mistake. So whenever you are doing these paddle fishings, either first of all, take somebody with you, and then secondly, you know, tell people where you're going. And, and that way, in case something does happen, you, you know, at least somebody will know where you are. Um, so I was totally on my own, but, but as far as, as what to do, there, there's really three things. So number one is a pre-trip plan. Do a pre-trip plan. Get on Google Maps and, and actually look at the area. Have it fresh in your mind. Look, look at it right before you leave. Have it fresh in your mind or even just print out, you know, print out the, uh, the, the screenshot from Google Earth. That way you know exactly where the turns are. Another thing that's very important that I did not do is to use the map feature where you can actually measure a distance uh, from Google Maps and, and Bing does it as well, but all of them do it. So for Google Maps, you just right click on, on a given spot where you want to start and then and, and select the, uh, the, the measure distance and then just go and, and select whichever other point you want to measure. And you can even do a trail. You can do point to point to point to point and it'll measure everything. Another thing to do is know the tides. Very, very important because as long as you know if the current's coming in or going out, you can use the current to determine the best route. Because if you know that the current's going out uh, and you need to get you know, closer to the, the Gulf or the ocean, you can just follow the current, follow the strongest current. And that's gonna be almost always the right answer when you do have to make a decision on one direction versus another and then vice versa, right? If, if the current's going in and you, and you wanna go out, then you'd have to go into the current. And, and finally, you know, check the weather just to make sure that you don't get caught in any kind of storms because when you are back in these areas, there's really no quick way in and out. You know, it's not like being in a boat where you can just motor up and, and hightail it to the, uh, to the boat ramp. You're on your own, you're, you're out there paddling and, uh, and so very, very important to know the weather make sure a big storm, especially thunderstorm, doesn't come up and stink up on you. All right, so the next big thing is equipment. Uh, number one, take your cell phone and make sure it's charged. I, I did the first half, I didn't do the second half, and it came back and bit me because if you have your phone, especially these smartphones, you can get on a map and, and you can zoom in to a really low level and see exactly where you are and then do your route from that. And so I, I went midway through and, and, and tried to check my phone it wouldn't turn on, it was just too dead to turn on, and so I was, I was on my own. So big, big deal is to bring yourself on, not only for the map, but also you know, if you do get into trouble, you can call somebody. Again, it's always nice to have, to have that cell phone and make sure that if, you, if it's not waterproof, put it in a baggie or put it in something that makes sure that it won't get wet and it won't get damaged. And if you're going for a really long distance, um, you know, take a map, a, a printable map is nice. It's nice to have that as a backup plan for the phone. Obviously, as far as equipment wise, you know, take all the tackle and stuff. And again, one, another thing I didn't bring that trip. Um, and, and the safety, you know, obviously keep, keep you know, all the safety equipment, like a life jacket and a whistle. Make sure you always have that on hand because it just, you just never know, you know, when something bad is gonna happen. It's always best to be prepared. And the third tip, and this is, you know, in case you come across a trip like this where just kind of everything starts going wrong, and especially if it happens like all at once where this is just, everything seems to go wrong and get lost, it is don't panic. You know, uh, it, it is really easy to get in a panic mindset if you're not careful, and, and then you really start making some bad decisions to get in, and get in much worse trouble. You'll have the phone, you can call somebody, and then you at least have your wits where you can just know, okay, I need to follow the current or I need to go against the current to get back to my target location. All right, well, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And for those, you know, for club members, I'll put a you know, video uh, that explained, that shows exactly where I was so that you can see an example of what these creeks look like uh, from online maps so that you can know which ones to look out for 
and, and which ones are, are going to be good. So I'll put a link down below for that. And if you're not yet in the fishing club, I'll put a link down below to learn more. But it's, it's really the largest network of like-minded anglers who are just there to help other anglers, there to support each other, to share, share with catches, but most importantly, to share tips. So it's really anglers from, from really kind of a, a medium to advanced level who just love fish and, and love, love sharing ideas with other anglers. So anyhow, that's it for now. Thank you so much for your time and watching this video. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Otherwise, I hope you can get on the water soon and catch some big ones.